Are you 100% certain if you were to die today that you would go to heaven? I'm Timothy White. I just want to take a couple minutes to share with you from the Bible how you could be 100% certain. The Bible makes it clear that there's only a couple things you have to realize in order to go to heaven. And the first thing that you have to know in order to go to heaven is that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the Bible says there that everyone has sinned. We've all broken God's rules. We've all transgressed God's commandments. And not only that, it says that we come short of the glory of God. So we don't measure up to God's perfect standard in His Word. And because of that, we, we cannot go to heaven by ourselves. And it says also that there is none that doeth good, no, not one. No one's good enough to get to heaven. None of us are good. And some people say, well, I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. But really, the Bible tells us that there's none good. And the Bible says, there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So really, the first truth that we have to realize is that we're not good. No one's good. And we've all sinned. We've all broken God's rules. The next thing that we have to realize is that that we deserve to go to hell. The Bible teaches that our sin, because of our sin, we deserve hell. It says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Now, if you work a job, you, uh, you go out and you earn a paycheck. But when we sin, we don't get money. We deserve we get that punishment of death is and that word death there it means hell meaning that because of our sin we deserve hell we deserve eternal death in hell the Bible says gives also a list of people that are going to hell it says but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters those are all a list of some pretty bad sins and we would all say well I could see how a witch would go to hell like a, a, a sorcerer but really what I find and what you find if we re keep reading this list is we're on this list too it says and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death the Bible tells us that everyone is told a lie it says like God be true but it says every man a liar so we've all lied before and the Bible says that because we're liars we have our part in this lake of fire and this lake of fire that's that's hell it's that place that burns uh, forever and ever and and when you go there you're tormented in the in that flame so we deserve that place called hell because of our sins because we've lied and we've done worse than lying we deserve that hell so not only do we have to realize that we deserve hell, and that's the bad news, but the Bible gives us some good news. The good news is that God loves us and doesn't want us to go to hell. He provided a way for us to go to heaven. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God loves us, and he doesn't want us to go to hell. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to give us the way of salvation. Jesus Christ, of course, we know is not just a man. He is the God-man. He, the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And Jesus Christ lived a perfect life because he is God. The life that we could never live. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned once. And towards the end of his life, some people got pretty mad at him to the point where they delivered him up and they nailed him to a cross. And he, when he was on the cross, he wasn't being punished for any wrong he had done. The Bible says that he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. So he suffered on that cross. He bore our iniquities on that cross. It's for our sins that he died. So Jesus Christ took our sins so we don't have to suffer in hell. He suffered for us, so we will never have to suffer in hell. After he suffered on the cross, they put him in a tomb, and he was dead for three days and three nights. But he rose from the dead, and the Bible says he's alive forevermore. So Jesus Christ came, he was God in the flesh, and he
He died, buried, and rose again for us. That's what Jesus did. So you have to understand that Jesus Christ came to die for you and buried and rose again. But just because Jesus Christ died for you, that doesn't mean you automatically get the gift of salvation. There's something that you got to do to receive that gift that Jesus Christ bought for you on the cross. And the thing that you have to do is, is just believe. And that's what the Bible teaches here in Acts chapter 16. It says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You see, going to heaven isn't based on anything like going to church, reading your Bible, turning over a new leaf, stopping certain sins, or even uh, doing good things like alms or prayer. All those things are good things to do, but it's not what gets us into heaven. What gets us into heaven is just one thing, and that's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just putting your faith, just putting our trust in Jesus for, uh, for Him to save you. And so the word believe means trust. If a fireman looked at you and he said, believe in me, and he was saying, believe in me, uh, to, to trust me to get you out of the fire. That's what Jesus is telling us. He's saying you need to just trust me. You need to just believe in me to get you out of the fires of hell. The Bible also, uh, I'll give you another verse that say just the same thing, believe. It says in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So there again, that verse just says, If you believe, you'll have everlasting life. You'll go to heaven. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Bible makes it very clear time and time again that going to heaven is just based on faith. It's just based on belief. You don't have to do any good works. You don't have to do any, uh, any sort of religious acts. You just have to put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing I want to, uh, you have to understand about salvation is that salvation is eternal. It's forever. Once you get saved, you're forever saved. The Bible says that when we get saved, we become children of God. And because of that, once we're a child of God, we're forever a child of God. It says in Galatians 3.26, it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So when we put our faith in Jesus, we became a child of God. And as a child of God, God is never going to throw us out of the family. He's never going to throw us into hell. That would not be a loving thing of a father to do. That's one proof that salvation is eternal because we are God's son. We're spiritually born into God's family. Another proof is that Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So the Bible clearly says there, Jesus said that he gives you eternal life. Eternal life means it's forever. When it's forever, it's not ever going to end. It's not, if it stops, then it would be temporary life. It wouldn't be eternal. And he says also that you'll never perish. You'll never go to hell. And it says nothing, uh, no man can pluck them out of my hand. So once you're saved, Nothing can pluck you out of the hand of Almighty God. So Jesus is saying very clearly, you can't lose your salvation. It's forever. You're never going to hell. No one, nothing and no one can pluck you out of his hand. The Bible says in uh, John 5, 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, Jesus speaking, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is past, from death unto life. See, salvation isn't something you get when, when you die. Salvation is something that you can get right now. Salvation is that you can receive. You can be passed from death unto life right now. And if you've never done this before, if you've never asked Jesus to save you, put your faith on Him. I want to help you do that. I want you to be able to be saved right now. The Bible says in Romans uh, 10, 9, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So the Bible makes it very clear there that 
if you just confess uh, to God that you believe in Him, that He will save you. I want to just help you to call out to God and just tell Him that you believe the things that I said in this video. If you believe that you're a sinner, that because of your sin you deserve hell, but you believe Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again for your sins so that you can go to heaven, and you're just going to put your faith in Him and not trust any good works or anything that you've done, but rather just Christ, trust Christ and what He did for you. If you believe that and you want to do that right now, I'm going to help you. Uh, I'm going to help lead you in a prayer. And so just bow your head. These aren't any magical words. It's the faith that's in your heart that saves you. And I just want to help you tell God that this is what you believe. So just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. But please save me right now and take me to heaven when I die. I know that you died, were buried, and rose again for me. I'm only trusting in you, Jesus. I'm not trusting in myself. Amen. And if you said that prayer and you believe that in your heart, the Bible says you're going to heaven. And that's the good news. And if you prayed that prayer, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, my number is on the back of that card I gave you. God bless you and have a good day.